how many unique items per row in a large data set. So let's look at our data. We have 100,000 rows, and what we're trying to do here, per row or per set of six values, we're trying to determine how many unique items in that, in that set of six. So when you look at some of these, you can sort of eyeball it and determine how many there are, but obviously you can't do this for 100,000 rows. So here's a formula from Microsoft. Uh, now, I find this one, I know what it's doing myself, but to describe it, I was having a hard time. So this one I find is much easier to describe. I was experimenting and I came up with this. So this part here is hard coded to six values because we have six values, potentially up to six unique values in here. So now what I'll do is I'll copy these and I'm going to paste them into the next sheet and then review all the steps to get to the final answer. So here we have those six same values and this is the answer for so this long formula I'll break it down into four steps so each part the red part I explain here the blue part which is the find function I explain in this part and then finally the if error to remove the errors and put in a zero is down here and this is our final answer alright so the first part is if you look at this little red box if you've ever used the match function before you'll notice that typically you only look for one thing within a range but here it's saying look for b2 to g2 within b2 to g2 kinda confusing but let's just break it into steps so if I was doing this independently one at a time here I'm looking for b2 value within that same area it's gonna find the the t2 um, in the first cell now here if I'm looking for R95 in this area it's gonna find it left to right in the second position so here uh, looking for X9 which is the D2 value from left to right it's the third position now let me just actually turn this on this might help a little bit so here we see uh, the yellow indicates that th these are duplicate values the red numbers are just showing one to six from left to right that's what the match function is really doing so let's go back to this one looking for d2 value of x9 and it gives a three because it's the third position here we are looking for another x9 but we're not getting a four even though it's the fourth item we're getting a three because it, it finds it sooner so from left to right one two three the x9 is there now this is a five because the z10 is it's not over here so it has to count one two three four five until it finds it and then finally another x9 and when we look for that value we find it in the third position so that's why we get a three here so imagine all six of these independent match functions are within one single match function here that we've entered as an array formula to do them all at the same time so we're looking for all of those values within the same area and when I highlight this and press the F9 key you'll see that I'm getting 1 2 3 3 5 3 which is exactly the same as what we have here in row 11 1 2 3 3 5 3 so that I think is the toughest part to understand in this uh, this formula just understanding how this uh, the normal match function is turned into an array but it's because we're looking for six things at the same time because we want to get these numbers here so you can already tell that we only have four unique numbers in here there is no four and there's no six so let's go now to the blue part uh, which is right in here so it's the find function now similar to the match you can only look for or find one thing at a time normally when you do the find function right you go like this and it says find text or meaning a single text within another single text cell like a sub search but here we've got multiple values looking within other multiple values so this is actually an array constant because I'm looking for one through six in each of those rows or here typically here it's just in this single area so this is an array constant and this part is not an array constant it's just because I um, highlighted the match part which we have here and I press the F9 key these these numbers here represent basically the step before in red all of this pressing F9 is this part so just a little bit easier to read but what basically is happening here 
is we're looking for is this one this is found here well it is is the two this value it is the three a three and the four it doesn't find over here it's a three right because it's the duplicate we have x9 and x9 and the five is found but then the last value a six it's looking for it and it's not found it's a three remember because up here this three is already in the data set so it's one two three when we're looking for this x9 from left to right is in the third position so now all of this, if I were to highlight all of this and press the F9 key again, now I'm getting 111, meaning that the 1 was found in the first position. So this 1 here was found over here. And then the 2 is found in the first position, which is the 2. Kind of strange, but that's just how it works. Uh, so we're getting three 1s. We can't find the 4. We do find the 5, which is here. And then the 6, we don't find it, so we get an error. So now we go to this part, and we see the same thing. But the if error now is at the beginning. And if there's an error, we want to see a 0 instead, because we can't sum up four ones and two errors. So this is simply, press the F9 key. It's giving us 111010. And the final step is the sum function, which just adds them all up together.